Pastor Bojo, a mighty prince that the Lord has raised in these days. And um, it's a privilege to build with a great teacher. I also want to salute my comrades. Um, Hallelujah. Okay. My comrades, you are welcome in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Let us pray. Father, tonight we ask that you come amongst us. Do your good pleasure. And make for yourself a great name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I had prepared a sermon for this evening and I went to take my bath and the Holy Spirit came into the bathroom and he gave me just one scripture. But you see, in order for us to understand the scripture that the Holy Ghost gave me, we need to do a teaching for 35 minutes. Then I'll introduce my scripture. First Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Meanwhile, the title of my sermon is a parable of Jonah. Uh, you see, that first line I read, I'd like us to look at it a bit before we continue reading. If you have a healthy Bible, a good Bible, gifts should be either in bracket or in italics. I'd like you to confirm that before I continue the reading. Is it confirmed? All right. Uh, the implication of that is that it is not found in the original manuscript. It was just added because of the context. I know you don't believe that. So we are going to do some scriptures in order for you to believe that. Now concerning spiritual griefs, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus accursed. And no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, verse 4, verse 5, verse 6 contains the... Now, in the broad heading... In the original manuscript, it reads concerning spiritual. And then the substance of spiritual is number one, gifts. In verse 4, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Number two, there are diversities of administrations or ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operation. The addition there was really an addition because the subject matter that Paul was treating was about what? Spiritual. The umpire for gifts happens to be the Holy Spirit, the umpire for ministries, the Lord of the harvest that assigns laborers into the administration of the purposes of God in a generation happens to be Jesus. The umpire for operations is God the Father himself. Whereas gifts operate in ministries. Ministries operate within the body of Christ. So the context for gifts is ministry. The context for ministry is the body of Christ. And the context for operations is territories. Are you still with me? Okay. If you study your Bible, you'll find out that from verse number 7 to verse number 11, speaks about gifts 
from verse number 12 to verse 9. And the reason why he did not want the Corinthian believers to be ignorant of the subject he called spiritual is because of their exposure, what they were exposed to before they came to the law. You see, these guys were spiritual people from the dark side. They had handled things that are in the demonic supernatural realm. And now that they were born again, Paul had to straighten them out. The normal Bible study outline that was used to disciple ordinary believers was not used for them. Paul had to... You are not with me. <laughs> <laughs> Paul had to come up with an outline that was consistent with their, their, own, their own case. He said, you know you were... He made a statement there. He said, ye know you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols even as you were led. So idols even led them. Evil spirit gave them inspiration. They fulfilled the will of darkness. And now they had given their lives to Christ and they were in the kingdom of God. Paul says, concerning spiritual, you cannot be ignorant of spiritual. Because you, you, you come into the body of Christ and you will still be taking advantage of the principles of the dark spirits that you were exposed to. And your case will be a case of a mixture. So he felt there was a need for the Corinthian believers to be educated on the subject called spiritual. Meanwhile, he gave perspective that in the divine supernatural, there are two rules you cannot avoid. The first rule is that no man operating by the Spirit can call Jesus accursed. The reason is because in order for a spiritual thing to take hold, there must be a legal premise that justifies his presence and his activity and his operation. You are not with me, I know. But you see, it is needful for you to understand that um, the death of Jesus was, it was a legal statement that was designed to satisfy the claims of divine justice, to make it possible for the Holy Spirit to begin his own work of organic salvation. The work of the Holy Spirit is predicated on the legal premise that the ministry of Jesus has provided. It is the organic projection that is coming out of the legal platform that is created on the account of the transaction that took place by the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, in order to bring perspective to that, we may need to look at Romans chapter 5, verse 10, briefly. Now, I will be faster if the technical man helps me. He said, for if when we were enemies... We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. That's the legal aspect. The death of his son was able to achieve reconciliation. So the quarrel that we had with God as humankind, Jesus has provided a possibility for that quarrel to be sated. Divine justice has been satisfied. Now, the other aspect of redemption is the organic side. You see, the one I just read now is the legal side. Provides premise for the organic side. He said, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. It means that the life of God comes to engineer your total deliverance from the impact of the fall. The fall affected your thinking. The fall affected your body. The, fall of, the, the symptoms of the fall are still present with us. And there is an organic salvation system that is trapped in the potential and the capacity of the life of God that is bequeathed to us on the account of our regeneration. That protocol of grace is administered as a process to ultimately read us off all the limitations that were compounded in the matter of the fall of man. 
So you see, in order for the Holy Spirit to have a premise to operate, there was a legality that had to be in place to justify, to create reference for his activity. If you find the powers of darkness probably in your community so powerful, the influence of darkness so strong in your domain, it is suggest su suggestive of the fact that there is a legal premise that provides platform for evil spirits. This world is not designed for spirits. It's a three-dimensional framework of existence. It's not built for spirits. It's built for entities that have bodies of earth. Three-dimensional entity. I know you don't believe that. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't want to go. I don't. Let me stop here. Did you get that? Yes. Or you want us to prove some things? It's built for three-dimensional entities. So in case a spirit has jurisdiction within this context, a man permitted that spirit to function. In fact, prayer is earthly permission for heavenly interference. We create possibilities. We create pathways for God to invade. That's what priesthood is about. So if darkness masters and colonizes a place, it is because there is a man that opened the door. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is predicated on the legal premise that the ministry of Jesus provided. So it is a continuation and a realization of his labors. Hence, anyone that is operating by the Spirit of God cannot contradict the ministry of Jesus that forms the foundation of that possibility. Is that clear? You are not with me. This man is trying to educate spiritual people. And he feels that this education is needed because the people have a knowledge that will make them susceptible to the activities of the devil and the deception of the kingdom of darkness. So he's providing burglaries, providing an armory for them in this understanding to make it possible for them to be able to understand the difference between the divine supernatural and the demonic supernatural. Second thing he said before we take off on the tangent that will bring us closer to the scripture I received. He said, no man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. There are two meanings to that. The first meaning is the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10. You know, anyone that accepts that receives regeneration. Are you with me? Seems you are not with me. <laughs> Anyone that receives regeneration must have believed that Jesus is immortal. You know, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, not the Savior Jesus, but who? It is his lordship that you bow to. That's the first requirement. Second requirement, you also need to confess what? That he was raised from the dead. That is to say that this Jesus we are talking about, this monarch that we need to bow to, one of his credentials is that he, in him resides immortality. So death could not make him his captive. He said when you believe this, his lordship and uh, his immortality out of the fullness of his reality he will he will save you he will administer cure to the death that is in your human spirit and create a possibility for his own spirit who is called the quickener to be domiciled therein 
That's the first meaning. Second meaning is you cannot recognize the realm, the sphere of God's rule. You cannot recognize the authority that is domiciled in the throne of Jesus. You cannot recognize how that he is Lord. It is impossible to, for you to recognize it except the Holy Spirit gives you understanding. So part of the things that reveals a genuine minister of the gospel is that through his actions, his words, even in his prayer, in his character, in his mannerisms, you see evidently that this one has a Lord. At any point in time that there is anything suggestive of the fact that he calls the shots, <laughs> We need to take our time, especially when the person violates the laws of God. And it happens to be that the laws of God derive from the nature of God. It is suggestive of the fact that that person does not know the government of God. And he should not speak for, for God at all. If there is anything that suggests that you are not in sync with the government of the Holy Spirit, it is to that degree that the devil is going to have access into your space. May the Lord give you understanding. Amen. Exactly. So let me go to the subject matter. We are dealing with a subject that is Paul's subject. My own subject is the parable of Jonah. But Paul's emphasis here is concerning what? In his own delivery, there were three items he mentioned under that broad heading, but I want to add some other items under the broad heading spiritual. Because we have spiritual authority. We have spiritual experience. We have spiritual reality. We have spiritual warfare. And we have spiritual knowledge. It's all concerning what? Spiritual. The aspect of this lexicon that lends itself to the scripture God gave me is just one, which is spiritual knowledge. So turn your Bible with me quickly. Quickly. We need to gain mileage now. Hallelujah. Second Samuel chapter 23, verse 14 to 17. 2 Samuel 23, verse 14 to 17. And David was then in an hold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one will give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. Why? And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, he will not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. David's village was Bethlehem. And it happened to be that David had to stay in hiding away from Saul that was looking for an opportunity to smite him. He found a fortress, a cave at Dulam, and that became his recruitment center. And previously in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 22, you will see how that people that were frustrated with life because of the government of Saul began to join themselves unto David. In my studies of... Uh, the ancient Roman Empire, I realize it takes five years to train a legionnaire, someone that is good with the sword, with the shield, 
with despair. Takes five years. But David was in that hold for 12 years. So the guys that he was training, he trained them and they became masters. But there was no opportunity for them to test their weapon. <laughs> Hallelujah. And one day, David was passing close to his village and the well that he drank from until he became an adult, he discovered it was part, it was the domain of the garrison of the Philistines. That means there was a minimum of about 2,000 soldiers there and a maximum of about 12,000 soldiers there. And when he, it was not a command he gave them, he said, oh, that one will give me drink, that one will give me what? Drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And that's how Jesus is groaning in our time. Groaning about the souls in Abelkota. Groaning about the souls in your neighborhood. Who will give me access to that strong domain? And the way Jesus put it was not, the way David put it was not as if he was given a command, it was just a desire. Meanwhile, these guys have been looking for an opportunity to test their skills. So they converted the desire of their master to a commandment. I pray we'll find men on this platform, on this mountain, that will con 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 convert the desire of Jesus into, into, into matching others. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm wondering whether the men were on drugs because they were going to face at least 2,000 armed soldiers. And if you have studied the Philistines were the ones that discovered iron. So they were, their equipment was state of the art. If you see them armed to the teeth with shin guard and protective devices, and you look at your own sword, you are likely to postpone that battle. <laughs> but these guys, they went down. And the thing about their going down was that at the time where the water will be taken from the well, there will be one man down. How did they protect? I have so many questions about that activity. How did they protect the guy that had to take water? And the well we are talking about is in the desert. It's in the Middle East. It's not the type, you know, really. May the Lord give you understanding. I was in Surulere. That's where my house was. Uh, the, the, um, the guys that came to drill our borehole, uh, if my memory serves me right, they had to go downward 175 feet. So this is Surulere, Lagos. So imagine a well in the Middle East how much time it will take for the guy to draw from that well. And the other mighty men defended him. They defended anyone that came, fell down. Anyone that came, came down. Until the guy got the water. After the guy got the water, the guy could not part actively participate in that warfare because he needs to. That was how they managed to come back and they gave David the water. You see, David happens to be a disciple of Samuel. There were several prophetic things that Samuel had taught him. So when they brought the water to David, uh, David refused to drink it and poured it out as a libation. In the eyes of David, according to spiritual knowledge, that water was equivalent to the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives. In the realm of the spirit, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, it was blood. Oh, you are not with me. If you lack spiritual knowledge, you will, com you will commit blunders. Let me give you an instance. Many years ago in our church, in those days, we wanted to build. So as long as the building is still in progress, we contribute money every Sunday. We started contributing that money when I had no beard. 
you are not. <laughs> Hallelujah. We continued con contributing the money until some strands came. The contribution was still on until I married. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> That's the kind of offering I'm talking about. The, the offering they gather in five nairas, ten nairas, and that kind of offering. It came to pass that our pastor now had, had an invitation to preach in the United States of America. And there was no funding. The only catch, the only catch of funding, of money in the ecosystem was where? <laughs> the building money. So our pastor requested that um, the money be released. The chairman said, no, this money is not for United States. It's for what? For building. He was removed from the position instantly. And a chairman that was willing to disburse, now release the money. True life story, true life. Our pastor went to the U.S. The, the state withheld. Our pastor was beat by a snake. In, in, not in Orile. I am okay like a spent all the time the conference time in the hospital without without health insurance and the church had to pay a price somehow they didn't want the pastor to go back empty so they mobilized and the pastor came back shouted on everybody and then gave the equivalent of what was given do you understand but unfortunately according to the shakers of the sanctuary the amount that was taken out, the meaning of what was taken out is not exactly the computer equivalent of what was brought in. Oh, you are not with me. <laughs> now, if you latch, meanwhile, that was the reason why many people began to die in the congregation. I'm telling you this because I was in the control room, in the prayer room. Yes, we were laboring to find out what is it and when, if I tell you we prayed, believe me, we prayed. We were praying and people were dying. It took a long time before the spiritual intelligence behind the open door that Satan was exploiting was revealed. That particular money, the way it came, determines its value in heaven. But without spiritual knowledge, you will think it means the same amount that is in central bank. David poured out this water as a libation to God. It's only God that can take this kind of... Hey! It's not this. It was because of spiritual knowledge that he took that decision. Now, if you lack spiritual knowledge... You know, I was listening to pastor yesterday... Some of us came um, late, so we couldn't meet the service. But I had to go through the service to understand um, the spirit of the conference and know uh, how to put my own quarter. And he was talking about the judgments of God. Uh, that, that, that is the wisdom for matters. Without spiritual knowledge, you are handicapped. There is a spiritual intelligence that will give you authority to manage a certain situation. And if you have not entered into that corridor and you have not secured it, you don't have the authority to change anything, even if you are quoting scriptures. May the Lord give you understanding. In view of the above, I need to show you that there are only two valid methods of accessing spiritual knowledge two hallelujah oh 
but I can only share one. And number two, access route for spiritual knowledge is submitting to be dealt with by God. The product of every dealing that God gives you is spiritual knowledge. Spiritual knowledge, that spiritual knowledge becomes an intelligence upon which the infrastructure of your life will rest. You know, David decided to exempt himself from the battles. And he said, I, I, I want sabbatical. And in his sabbatical leave, he was found on the roof. I don't know. You want to chill out, he's on the roof. I'm still trying to investigate that, that situation. There were many things happening from, from the... From, that vintage position, he could see many things. People were carrying cows around. People were trying to train horses. People, he didn't see all of that. He's a woman, he saw. You see, may, may the Lord help us. So many things were taking place. He was a woman. Ah. And from the moment he had an affair with that woman, God initiated a series of dealings. The reason what God wanted to do was to purge him from any such tendency in the future. By the time he went through the process and was restored, when he became old, they looked for it. It, it was cold. They looked for a, a damsel, a fair damsel, put in his, in his duvet. He didn't touch her. <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding. The, pro <laughs> the product of being dealt with by God is an inner knowledge that will, will ensure your comportment, your alignment with God. When you see a man sitting in the midst of corruption and he refuses to partake, even though that opens the door of persecution on his life, that man has seen something. So if we talk about dealings, the best example in the entire Bible is Jonah. The Lord wanted him to carry a message of rebuke, a message of warning to a people. And he knows God that if he preaches there, they will repent and God will forgive them. Ah. So it's okay. What if the preacher refuses to go? God, even though he has intentions, the circuit will not be complete. So he decided to go in a direction that was opposite to where God was sending him. Meanwhile, this was a man that thought he was using his will against God. The result was that he ended up in the belly of a whale. So when we teach about hell, there are two types, two dimensions of hell. We have hell the place, and we have hell the experience. So if we want to teach about hell, we will need to, all the indicators that were in that experience that Jonah had, is very suggestive, very illustrative of what is obtainable. What was happening to Jonah was that as God was dealing with him in that place, you see, his strong will was melted. You, I know you believe you are strong will. His strong will had to bow. He began to confess right there. And then God used a, a, a means of transport to relocate him <laughs> to. <laughs> this dealing that the man had for three, three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, it produced spiritual knowledge. May your suffering not be wasted. May the processes, your, your marginalization in the office, may it not be wasted. Amen. 
every such situation that God allows in your life, it is because he wants you to yield and to receive spiritual knowledge. Now, this is a scripture I was given. Jonah chapter 2 verse 8. This is a, the proverb. This is the parable of Jonah. He came out of three days of dealing. It's a capsule. He said, Dead that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Now, the first thing we can pick from this scripture is that there's an allocation of mercy for every destiny. If you are the one that doesn't know you need mercy. God is aware of your ignorance, but is he allocated mercy to support your destiny? Oh, having received the mercy of God, we have continued on to this day. People that understand it know that it is not of him that will it. Because you want to do ministry. It is not of him that run it. Your efforts, your efforts in themselves are too weak to furnish anything, to strike any chord in eternity. It's of God that what? So the man came out with a capsule. Dead that observe lying vanities. And our generation looks like that. We like things that are not rooted in God. We are given to patterns and trends. Meanwhile, the ancient ways of God cannot be edited. When you find a man that speaks for Satan, if he's truly an agent of Satan that Satan has endorsed to speak for him, they are not in the cities. They're in the woods. You know, you grew up in Lagos, so there are many things you are not aware of. If you are also going to speak for God, when your congregation buys you water bed, don't sleep on it. Give your wife. Because you need to create that same village life, that rugged life that that man that speaks for Satan creates in order for it to be conducive for him to pick the frequencies of the devil. You will need to create the same circumstance in Lagos in order for you to have the kind of stature that is needed for God to count on you to exercise guardianship in your territory. There that observe lying vanities, the allocation of mercy that God in his own wisdom has made available, they forsake it. So they live life without mercy. That's a terrible place to be. Can we pray? We can pray? Okay. We'll pray for five minutes. And the Lord said he wants to take glasses from people's eyes this evening. You don't need to believe it. Don't, don't worry about that. You don't. So you pray sitting in Lagos? You sit down to pray in Lagos? <laughs> listen to me, listen to me. For 14 years. Are you there? The auditorium I used to teach is a 250 member capacity building. So one of my pastors looked at me after 14 years of laboring. This is where you are. I started operating the gifts of the Spirit over 22 years ago. Do you know that operating the gifts of the Spirit doesn't make ministry grow? At least in my own experience, I can tell you that. <laughs> oh! Praying for crippled people to walk. I started experiencing that long ago. So one of my pastors rose up and said, this man is not going anywhere. He even started preaching to other pastors. Do you see any future in this place? Hallelujah. 
that he has made his own plan so meanwhile in the place of prayer we had picked him but the lord said it's a test it's a test of your meekness whether you are not easily offended or whether you easily offend do you understand that because meekness is 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 an allocation of grace that makes you not to be easily offended and not to easily offend so i knew that for two years and i kept loving him he will go back and tell the other pastors i was in your pastor i don't know if there's a cause on his life he's powerful but there are forces this news was coming to me but the great one had spoken to me long time ago in fact he spoke to me in brazil i was praying with my friend and my friend picked that person's name and told me i knew two years before the time because the insults of my life were too much i had to release him that may the lord help him may the lord bless him. meanwhile i didn't know that god refused to increase my my scope because he was there I released him I didn't curse him and I don't curse because I'm called to build people I'm not called to destroy if God wants to destroy somebody anointed that's his business I don't know how to destroy people the moment he left my season changed and he left and the ones that left with him they that observe lying vanities they don't have a tomorrow because mercy will be withdrawn you want to pray tonight and say god oh oh i despise the vanity are you are you are you a victim of situations situations have changed your belief system there is no foundation in those situations even time itself is a lie I refuse to believe a lie. I will hold on to the allocation of mercy that God has revealed to help my destiny. Can you cast away the chains of that circumstances have put on you? The chains that situations put on your life. I will ride by the mercy of God. there's an allocation of mercy that God has made available yeah. when that mercy begins to speak Nothing can resist it. Nothing can stop it. In the name of Jesus. Sorry, we don't have enough time, sufficient time to prosecute that prayer point. Please take it home. I will not forsake my mercy. Because it's not of him that will it. It's not because I have a good intention. Without Christ, my prayer cannot strike any chord in the realm of the spirit. The sons of the bond woman pray, they fast. What's the difference between their prayer and yours? I pray by a power that this world does not know. I fast by a power that humanity is not aware of. My life is what it will become, not because I went to school and studied chemistry. The mercy of God is on my life. So when a thousand falls by my side, 10,000 by my right hand, nothing comes near me. I am a product of his mercy. 
and the prince of this world will come but yet will find nothing in me there's an insurance policy that keeps me and my going out and coming in is blessed if you need to use glasses to read you need to use glasses to see remove them put them in your pocket lay your hands on your eyes now we have four minutes to do this four minutes right now just lay your hands there short-sighted long-sighted glaucoma astigmatism cataract in the name of Jesus Father tonight I bind every blinding spirit blinding spirits be bound in the name of Jesus <laughs> I say take your hands off in the name of Jesus Come out of the eyes right now in Jesus' name. Come out of the eyes right now in Jesus' name. I see in Jesus' name. I see in Jesus' name. Remove your hands. From your eyes the moment you notice you can see show me a sign the moment you notice you can see show me a sign okay someone can see okay yes if you notice you can see just show. you notice you can see just wave All right, all right, all right. All of you, can you come here? The ones that can see. Meanwhile, as the service is going on, other eyes will be opening. Yes, till the grace is shed. Yes, you can see. Join them. You were short sighted, but you can see now. You were long sighted, but you can see now. Just come this way. Oh, I see heaven open. Oh, Availo Moko Breski Famahai. You can see now. Join them. Where, where's the person that helped me this morning? Just take two. 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 I have. Oh, you are you are wasting my. Yeah? What happened to you? Please listen. You react to that's photophobia take a look at some we have so much light here try it out okay i think she's okay pass the mic you are short-sighted you use glasses yes I do. but you can see now yes okay. can you see my face yes. okay can you celebrate jesus pass the mic I can't see the time, the timing at the back. Okay, you can't see things. anything there. Yeah, but now I can actually see the time. It is. It's you can see the time day. now. You can see it now. You can see it now. I'm short sighted. But you you used to be short sighted. -sighted yes, but you yes. can read now. Praise God. I used to be short sighted and. Um, they said astigmatism. Short sighted with astigmatism. Also, glaucoma runs in the family, but I know it's. Glaucoma gone runs now. in the family, that inheritance has been cut off. <laughs> the reason why I ask you to wait, because some of you left. Because, you know, that's how he works with me. The people he wants me to minister to, he heals them first. If you were healed, come, come, come. What? Oh! Um, now you see when these things happen people think we come in the night to ask some people to come and testify I came yesterday evening and I don't know this 
Have we met before? No, sir. I just came in from Ibadan. He came in from Ibadan, so we, we didn't meet. He can see. Now, where's. Oh, sorry, my time is up. God bless.